Sutta said, O residents of Naimisha Forest, after hearing Brahma's words, the excellent sage further requested him for more such stories that quell sins. Narada said, O Brahma, O great Lord, though continuously hearing the auspicious story of Shiva from your lotus face, I am never satisfied. Please further narrate the auspicious story of Shiva entirely. I wish to hear that story in which Sati is glorified, O Brahma. How was the auspicious Sati born of Daksha's wife? How did Shiva become inclined to marry her? How did she cast off her body formerly due to her rage with Daksha? How was she born as the daughter of Himalaya, and how did she reach heaven again? How was her rigorous penance performed? How was her marriage celebrated? How did she happen to share half the body of Shiva? Please explain all of these points in detail, O intelligent one. There is none else to remove my doubts, and none shall ever be like you. Brahma said, O sage, listen to the auspicious glory of Sati and Shiva entirely. It is extremely sanctifying, divine, and the greatest secret of all secrets. O sage, Shiva himself narrated this formerly to Vishnu, the greatest of devotees for helping others when requested by him. Vishnu, the intelligent and the greatest of Shiva's devotees, was asked by me, and, O great sage, he told me everything lovingly. Therefore I shall narrate this ancient story that confers the fulfillment of all desires, since it glorifies Sati and Shiva. Originally, when Shiva was separated from Shakti and was pure consciousness alone, he was attributeless, free from alternatives, devoid of forms, and beyond the existent and non-existent. He, the greatest of the great and of changeless form when united with Shakti, was filled with attributes and had specific forms and divine features. O Brahmana, he was accompanied by Uma. Vishnu was born of his left, and I, Brahma, of his right side. O great sage, Rudra was born of his heart. I became the creator, Brahma, Vishnu, the cause of sustenance, Rudra, the author of dissolution. Thus Sadashiva manifested himself in three forms. After worshipping him, I, Brahma, the grandfather of all the worlds, began the creation of all subjects, including devas, asuras, human beings, etc. After creating the guardians of the subjects, prajapatis, daksha, and other devas, I considered myself loftier than others and was delighted. O sage, when I created Marichi, Atri, Pulaha, Pulastya, Angiras, Kratu, Vasishta, Narada, Daksha, and Bhrigu, my mental sons of lordly stature, a beautiful woman of handsome features was born of my mind. She was variously called Sandhya, Divakshanta, Svayang Sandhya, and Jayantika. She was very beautiful with finely shaped eyebrows capable of captivating the minds of even sages. Neither in human world nor in that of the devas was there such a woman of complete perfection in all qualities. Nor was there such a woman in nether worlds in all the past, present, and future. On seeing her, I involuntarily got up. Various thoughts rose up in my heart. Daksha and others, the Prajapatis, Marichi, and others, all my sons, felt similarly. O oh, best of sages, when I, Brahma, thought like this, a wonderfully beautiful being appeared as my mental creation. He had a golden complexion. His chest was stout and firm. His nose was fine. His thigh, hips, and calves were round and plump. 
He had blue wavelets of hair. His eyebrows were thick-set and tremulous. His face shone like the full moon. His hairy chest was broad like a door. He was as huge as the celestial elephant Airavata. He was wearing a blue cloth. His hands, eyes, face, legs, and fingers were red in color. He had a slender waist. His teeth were fine. He smelt like an elephant in its rut. His eyes were like the petals of a full-blown lotus. He was fragrant like the filaments. His neck was like the conch. He had the emblem of a fish. He was tall. He had the makara fish for his vehicle. He was armed with a bow and five flowers for his arrows. His loving glance was very attractive as he rolled his eyes here and there. Oh, dear one, his very breath was a fragrant wind. He was accompanied by the sentiment of love. On seeing that being, my sons, Daksha and others, were struck with wonder and became eager and inquisitive. Their minds became deformed and confused immediately. Smitten with love, they lost their mental courage. On seeing me, the Creator and the Lord of the Worlds, the person bowed down with his shoulders stooping by humility and said, O oh Brahma, what is the work I am to do? Please assign me an honorable task, O oh Brahma, suitable to and becoming me. O oh Lord of the three worlds, you are the Creator, and hence the Lord of all the worlds. Please tell me, what is my honorable and suitable place? Who is going to be my wife? Sutta said, on hearing the words of the noble-souled person Kama, the Creator did not say anything for a short while in his surprised predicament. Then, steadying his mind and abandoning his surprised look, Brahma, already a victim of Kama, spoke to the person thus. Brahma said, in this form and with your five flower arrows, you can enamor and captivate men and women and carry on the eternal task of creation. In this universe consisting of three worlds, mobile and immobile beings, none of the living beings, including the devas, will be competent to defy you. O oh, best of beings, not to speak of ordinary living beings, even I, Brahma, Vasudeva and Shiva will be in your control. Invisibly you enter the hearts of living beings, excite thrilling feelings of pleasure, and carry on the activities of creation that is to last forever. The minds of all living beings will become an easy target of your five flower arrows. You will be the cause of their elation. Thus I have assigned you the task of facilitating creation. These sons of mine will confer names and titles on you. Brahma said, O best of the celestials, after saying this and casting a meaningful glance at my sons, I resumed my lotus seat immediately. <laughs>